the next myth on my list is spirituality is best experienced in retreat or isolation. You know, I, I'm not saying there's, there isn't value in going on a spiritual retreat or doing things like meditating or gathering to, with other spiritually like-minded people for some sort of ceremonial, you know, retreat or isolation or connection, right? But the thing is, I think a lot of people think that this is the way to experience spirituality, and it is only one way. And in fact, the the juiciest spiritual experiences are those that we experience in our daily lives, in the middle of our chaos, in the middle of our, you know, imperfect, you know, ups and downs of normal day, daily living, because that is where we get validation that it's not something we're sort of conjuring up. It's something that's automatically flowing through us. So it's, it's kind of like it allows us to sort of view spirituality differently if we don't have such attachment to needing to do it separately. I've had students in my class say, classes say things like, oh, well, I'm really not you know, getting further on my path because I'm not taking the time to meditate for an hour every day. And I'd look at them and say, well, what do you mean? I mean, you can have a conversation with your inner self, with your guides, while you're driving along, while you're stuck in the freeway, you know. Spirituality is not something that just happens to us when we spend a lot of time focusing on being spiritual. It is something that happens on a moment-to-moment basis. It can happen when we're sitting in a traffic jam. It can happen to us while we're eating jam. It's, it's a matter of being present. So, yes, the compartmentalization, the, the, the retreat, the isolation can benefit us and can actually give us some context. Like, okay, with meditation, this is what it feels like to be sort of like more of the observer than actually the person experiencing it. Can, that can come in handy during our daily lives. But some of the, the, the best parts of spirituality is experiencing it within the natural flow of our moment-to-moment lives. Myth number five, how much we give to others is a measure of how spiritual we are. This one bugs me so much. It's, it's almost like we need to be giving to others in order to be spiritual. Well, when you're on your spiritual path and you, you found wholeness and joy within yourself, you naturally want to give to others. But what happens is people put the cart before the horse. And instead of focusing on, you know, creating the internal joy and focusing on their own inner growth, they focus externally on giving to others. Now, I have to say, you know, as, as a mother, I understand that when you're parenting you know, a young child, you know, or a child of any age, that sometimes you have to give more than you have, you know, and, it, and, it, and it's not always easy. But really, in terms of spirituality, it's kind of like you should give only if it is coming up naturally for you. Yeah. A couple of things you. happen. People think that somehow by setting boundaries, they're not being spiritual, which Um, I call BS because in order to honor your spiritual path, you need to be able to set boundaries. You need to keep yourself on path and say no to situations, to people, to circumstances that are not benefiting you on your journey. That's really important. The other thing that happens with this concept that, you know, in order to be spiritual, we have to be, you know, we, we get measured by how much we give to others is we end up getting codependent, thinking, oh, well, I'm going to help others by fixing other people. And so essentially you're finding your own worthiness through what you're doing for others. And it's actually disempowering to you because you need to find that love and worthiness within it, regardless of who you're helping or not. And secondly, when you're in that codependent situation, you're actually disempowering the person you're helping because you're stating to them on an unspoken level I don't trust that you're able to do this yourself, so you need my help. So this this concept of, you know, how spiritual we are is measured by how much we give to others is a, a misnomer, and we need to let go of that. Um, yes, the, the help will come naturally from us when we give to others, but more importantly, really, this is from sort of my energetic perspective, the most important contribution you can provide to this planet, to the universe, is through your vibration. And you can only shift your vibration to be more soul-led, to be more connected with spirit by taking care of yourself first. Number six. I love this one. Spiritual (laughs) lessons must be difficult or painful. Yes, people can have amazingly transcendent experiences after hitting rock bottom from, Mm -hmm. say, addiction or 
loss or illness. But, you know, when I was experiencing the early stages of cancer and facing sort of this from the psychological perspective, the potential of dying very young and not having the experiences mm-hmm. of children and travel that I so wanted, um, I, you know, I, I had a very profound experience at one point when I was doing all the, the right things, you know, the doctors had nothing to offer me, but I was doing all the right things in terms of visualization and, you know, my diet and all this stuff. And it was getting worse and worse. And there came a moment when all of a sudden I realized I have no control over my body. The health of my body I have no control over. And I began to sob and sob and let go. And at that moment, I heard someone somewhere saying, aha, now you get it. Mm. Now we can work together to heal you. And at that moment, things began to shift. And I realized that with my own experience, and I believe with so many of these these rock bottom, hit rock bottom and then transcend to, you know, a, yeah. a total life transformation, what happens is there's a certain type of surrender, a letting go. And the point is with our spirituality, that letting go is key to experiencing it. It's not about controlling and pursuing as we were talking about before. And it's not about having to hit rock bottom. It's about being in the moment and, and allowing that which could be, you know, taking a bite out of that perfect strawberry and really experiencing the fullness, the joy, feeling that the the tingling in your body as you're being fully present or standing next to somebody in the grocery store line and realizing that they're suffering and pain and being present with that and allowing it or cuddling with our our pet, you know, whatever it is. Yes. We can be in the moment in that place of allowing and have that spiritual experience so we don't have to go to hit rock bottom to get to that surrender. 